Finally. The long-awaited sci-fi epic Dune has arrived. Both a remake of the original 1984 and an up-to-date adaptation of the original novel by Frank Herbert, Dune follows Paul, the son of Lady Jessica and Duke Leto. House Atreides is one of many in an intergalactic guild set 8,000 years from now. House Atreides is powerful, and the Emperor of the Guild wants them eliminated. So the Atreides are granted stewardship of the desert planet Arrakis, formerly governed by the Harkonnens, rivals of the Atreides. Once on Arrakis, the Atreides must harvest spice, the most valuable substance in the known universe, granting long life, enhanced physical and psychic abilities, and is used for interstellar travel like warp jumping. With this, the Atreides must hurry to establish themselves before the coup against them can unfold. And now we ask the most important question of all. With all this this hype is Dune as good as people are saying. Let's dive into this. First things first, Dune looks gorgeous. Of course, this isn't hard to do nowadays, but despite deserts having the color range of bone to sand, Arrakis is quaint. The combination of practical and special effects is almost seamless here. The shit compositing of the Marvel films is gone, and it feels so good with actors on real sets or locations. My god, it's almost like a little care was taken. Who would have thunk? The costumes are also subtle, showing off their designs, but emphasizing utility above all else. The personal shields are great, too. They are shown as a series of bouncing blue shadows that can only be penetrated by slow entry instead of rapid approach. This shows us firearms are almost useless in this series. So with us both being told and shown, it makes sense when orbital bombs falling onto the shields don't penetrate until gravity slowly pulls the bomb through the shield. At least the Jawas got their money worth selling these sand crawlers to the Atreides. And the sandworms look great as well. They don't have teeth, though, so they look more like bristled sphincters, but the size and thread is conveyed. Different language and culture is also present, like the elves of Lord of the Rings, the Fremen have their own based on their environment and beliefs. Although the people under the Atreides are absent here. The politics of the universe is also explored a good bit. Everything from the ulterior motives of the Bene Gesserit to the machinations against House Atreides by the Emperor and and the Harkonnen. There are many lesser world-building details that do not make it into the film, though. The major story beats happen, like the Garn Jabbar ritual, or the Siege of Arakin, etc., but lots of little details like the people's praise of Duke Atreides saving the workers instead of the spice when the sandworms attack is absent. Although this keeps us focused, I find it funny that I mentioned The Last Duel should have taken a page from Spielberg and suffered for that mistake. Dune does it, and it's all for the better. Mostly. Minute character details are also absent here, for example, Lady Jessica internally monologuing like an anime protagonist. But again, these would have been distractions that don't really serve the main story at hand. Furthermore, despite all the information given, it's never overwhelming like the encyclopedia dump that was Mortal Kombat. Here, the context is firm. The information is clear, repeated, shown even, and has room to breathe between to let you absorb it. Yes, there is a bit to sift through, but it's explained so simply even a caveman could do it. Spice. Good. Arconin. Bad. Great! I didn't need to scratch my head and Google anything out of confusion! Now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't raise valid issues, but finding any in the first place was difficult. For example, some of the key words and phrases are mumbled out, so you might be left confused. Terms like Benny Gesserit are said often and clear, so you know who and what that group is, while other phrases like the Kwisat Haderach are mumbled out like the actor has a mouthful of noodles. Also, the film isn't very action-packed. It prefers to go slow and build the world. And slow it is, like turtles working construction. When the action does occur, it has merit, even though it might not stand out as anything special. If 30 minutes were added for little details like the aforementioned people's developed trust of the Atreides sprinkled with some much-needed levity, then the pace wouldn't feel so overbearing. You could hardly call these real issues. Honestly, they feel more like nitpicks. I might as well be throwing yellow snowballs at armor-clad knights for all they're worth, like my complaint about the poster. This is my most vapid complaint ever, but the font of the title is awful. Could you imagine if the trailer said something along the lines of, Coming to theaters October 2021. Kunk. Whoever thought that was a good idea needs to be fired. With all that said, objectively, issues are practically absent, and Dune excels at just about everything from the world to performances or writing to special effects. Dune is very good, and I highly recommend you see it. Perhaps the best compliment I can give about Dune is this. At about the hour and a half mark, I checked over my notes, thinking I know the story pretty well, and what few issues there are, I know what to bring attention to. So I turned off my phone and stopped taking 
notes. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of Halloween Kills at the link over there. And I'll see you in the next video.